She is a spunky caricature artist who can complete a work within two minutes. And he is an art gallery owner who also sketches and paints. How do they begin? What is their story? They share their personal journeys straight from the art. A caricature is a portrait that exaggerates or distorts the essence of a person, animal or object to create an easily identifiable likeness. Drawing caricatures can simply be a form of entertainment or the art can be employed to make a serious social or political point. While the art is still in its infancy in Singapore, there are few well-known artists here. One such artist is Ye Ruo Shi, whose works are in constant demand. I love to draw. Um, I can sit uh, at one uh, spot and uh, keep drawing and drawing for hours. My parents uh, have started bringing me to art classes since uh, I was like five or six years old. When I entered secondary school, I also took part in uh, you know, art and craft club. That is my CCA, so I've been like, you know, not stopping in the practice of art. I took part in a lot of competitions, but um, I always have uh, no luck winning any. Because the um, funny thing about me is that every time when I um, go through art competition, I would, uh, you know, um, get too nervous and then I would um, always uh, end up uh, having flu and things like that and yeah, I, I, I didn't really manage to perform well during competitions. Roche's love for drawing led her to join the Academy of Fine Arts where she studied graphic and fashion design. As a graphic design student, uh, I was also a very quiet student. Um, I'm not so much interested in design actually, more interested in drawings. So uh, during that time, uh, most of my works are illustration related. I started off as a fine art painter uh, after switching from being a graphic designer. So uh, I started off uh, painting flowers because I think flowers um, are very feminine uh, and best uh, represent my character a very feminine person. Yeah. Most of my flowers are local flowers like uh, orchids, spider lilies. I'm more familiar with their presence yeah, because of my environment. It's the formation of the flower petals and the flower buds and also the colours that um, give me a lot of ideas of how I can explore this uh, object. From painting flowers, Roche began to explore painting human figures while retaining her bold and colourful style. My interest is still back to drawing people. I think it's uh, some kind of a like, fascination. Yeah, because I think that uh, drawing human, you know, is quite, can be quite complex. And uh, also because of the, the complexity of their feelings and things like that, that uh, really interests me to study more in that. In that yeah. Roche progressed to the art of caricature, realizing that it can quickly create a strong connection between her and the person she's drawing. Actually, uh, during graphic design time, I have been doing some uh, caricature works for friends. I think the most uh, challenging part is uh, how to uh, bring out the main features of the person and yet uh, being cartoonish. Because the uh, caricature itself is uh, actually a very, um, you know, uh, relaxed, uh, happy kind of uh, art form. But the ultimate uh, goal is actually to make a person happy. Ruo Shi isn't the only artist in the family. Her husband Kamal is also an accomplished artist who works closely with her. Well, my husband is also a, an artist, a caricaturist. He's also um, involved in uh, batik making and uh, graffiti. Uh, my name is Kamal Dola. I'm an, uh, I'm an artist and husband to Yero <laughs> She, she, she don't like to be said 
I mean, like, you know, if I say, <laughs> the wife of Yeah Rocha, and then it's like, I'm the husband of Yeah Rocha. <laughs> you know, no, the us. The wife of Kamal Dola. So, oh you know, it's like, <laughs> well, we met in school when we were in Nanyang Academy of Fine Arts. Yeah, so. Well, she's a nerd. I mean, that's like, it's, it's a known fact. I mean, like, uh, I mean, she's the nerdiest nerd, and then like, I was the most naughtiest of the naughty kind of thing. So somehow or other, I'm, I'm attracted to that that uniqueness, you know, that uh, because she was very prim and proper. She's not the artist type, you know. She spoke very good English and she's very, she's always very neat, you know, and like... Hey, if you're going to say my Mandarin was so good. Yeah, Mandarin was good, but... And, and then, uh, well, well, she was interpreting, a lot of the classes were in Mandarin. Some, you know, we had a lot of uh, old tutors who, who only spoke Mandarin. So, yeah, so I, I, I got her to interpret most of the lessons for me and mark my attendance when I'm not around. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it started. He's not the type that girls would fall in love with. Uh, he, he uh, you know, he has the very artist kind of uh, image, like long hair, then I uh, use, uh, use uh, a pencil to uh, tie a bun <laughs> at the back, then, um, Dress are uh, very, you know, uh, anyhow. <laughs> With husband and wife working together, how do they handle work life and family life? Yeah, the pressure has always been there. Uh, but as the times go, and, uh, you know, uh, we get to understand each other each other's uh, strength and weakness. Uh. As long as we get to discuss about it and uh, be positive, uh, we can always overcome the indifference. I mean, it's okay. To me, it's like, you know, couples working together, it's not really an issue. It's like, it provided we both share the same ideals, uh, both of us have the same interests and the same strengths, then it's okay. I mean, like, we, 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 we very much work hand in hand, you know? Uh, so I think it's, it's perfectly okay, but at the same time, we need some time out. Like, you know, she has her own thing that she's doing that I'm not involved. Like, she does a Chinese opera, which I'm totally not involved. <laughs> and then I, I got my... Totally? Mind. Yeah, I mean, I'm only involved as an audience when, you know, she... And also a, a photographer. As a photographer yeah. at the time. But then, you no, know, it's like, it's, it's her thing, you know? And I have my batik, which is my thing. And then, so we have our own avenue to, to be on our own. Being two artists in the same field, who tends to be more critical? He is the more critical. Yeah, I think I'm, yeah. I'm a bit hard on, on both of us. So, yeah. yeah, we don't take things so, I don't take things so easily. We both enjoy drawing. Even up to today, after so many years, we're still looking at artworks together. I mean, as someone who works in the art, you must always be crit critical of your own work. I mean. I don't know, maybe I sometimes a bit hard on her also. You know? <laughs> but, but the thing is, we, this is something we talk about a lot. No? I suppose this is one of the stronger things that hold us together. The, yeah. After the break, Roche demonstrates the process of drawing a caricature and get to know a sketch artist who owns an art gallery. She collects dolls. That also provides inspiration for her drawings. She is also actively involved in the Han Cultural Society, with heritage as a recurring theme in her artwork. Well, this is a Han costume. So uh, it's a traditional costume, just like uh, Chong Sam, like that. But because uh, I'm a Han Chinese, so this is uh, more like my costume. I have been uh, uh, practicing uh, Cantonese opera, so for me, I'm just kind of exploring my own uh, culture. Well, this is um, actually given to me because um, I was involved in the Elephant Parade, which uh, ended uh, beginning of this year. They invite artists and uh, celebrities to uh, paint on the life-size baby elephant sculpture, and uh, and then after that, uh, the elephant has been auctioned off and. Uh, uh, some of the money has uh, been contributed to the wildlife reserves. As you can see, the elephant has this um, Oprah face. 
which is uh, because uh, I'm an opera actress and um, also this is also a form of uh, representation for the uh, Asian culture. There are four designs actually, so four different designs representing four um, main uh, race in Singapore. Eurasian, the red one is Chinese, and uh, the blue one is Indian, and then the green one is Malay. Ruo Shi and her husband have a studio at Goodman Art Centre where they practice their art. I think uh, she got a very nice smile, so I'll be um, you know, focusing on that feature. And um, I can play down the nose, make it a bit smaller. And the eyes is uh, close set and also a bit round. Uh, that the eyes I will play up a little more. Is there a particular age group that Roshi finds a challenge to draw? Uh, well, I think more like the old people that is more difficult to draw because uh, old people, they are more conscious of their uh, looks in, in a way that uh, because they are conscious that we will draw their uh, wrinkles, so they usually are quite resistant. Every time I come across a, a stranger, I will usually, uh, first thing I'll do is I'll size them up in my head. I'll look at them and then I'll think, uh, is this a pear-shaped face or a strawberry face or, you know, is the nose a button nose or a potato nose? <laughs> yeah, all these things, you start to notice people like this. How long does Ruoshi normally take to complete a caricature? Initially, I spent about five minutes, but right now I see that my speed can go up to one and a half minute. One and a half minute is the fastest uh, speed for me. For those longer period of time, one is uh, the studio caricatures where it takes a few days more detailed works. Speed and exaggerated likeness, two factors that are always evident in the art of caricature. And another form of graphic work that uses the ability to quickly record impressions is the art of sketching. Sketching is most often executed in dry media such as graphite pencil, charcoal or pastel. It can be as simplified as outlines or very detailed pieces of art. Jeffrey Wandley is an up-and-coming sketch artist whose charcoal works were shown in exhibitions here and abroad. Jeffrey's art, mostly of heritage landmarks, reflects his affinity with these places. As a kid, I was, I, was, I was very active. I was very active, very curious. I, I wanted to uh, do a lot of things. Back when we were, uh, we were staying in the Kampung at that time, it was in Kampung Yunos. So uh, what we do was that the, what the, I, I like to do was to doodle on the walls. Yeah. So I think this is quite evident now that, now that I have kids, I see doodles on the walls, it reminds me when I was a kid then. So, uh, yes, we got a bit of a scolding and all that. So what I did was uh, to find places to, to draw, I draw underneath the bed. So nobody will see it, you see. So it's only, I will go to the bed and I take a look at all my drawings downstairs, yeah. So uh, uh, drawing has been part of the, uh, been part of us since when we were young. Jeffrey was exposed to the world of art ever since young through his late father, who was a renowned musician and painter. My late father was uh, Haji Wanli Yazid. I think he, uh, he was uh, primarily known for his uh, contribution to the music scene in Singapore. Yeah, he was a composer and arranger uh, during the Cathy Chris films. Those were the days when uh, Singapore was the Hollywood of the East. The other thing that I found out about him was that when I saw him painting, so he paints in watercolours, paints in watercolours, uh, and he told me that uh, 
his teacher was uh, a, a, a very prominent watercolorist from West Sumatra. Yeah, those, those are little influences of uh, music, the arts, he encourages art. Some or other float through our, our body and mind and soul. Following his father's advice, Jeffrey pursued a career in architecture. However, his love for the arts never waned. Drawing, painting was a passion. So uh, I, I wanted to do further in that, but, uh, and uh, father encouraged me to do a, a little bit more of a professional degree, which is architecture. Actually, there's no training. Yeah, so I, I didn't have any formal training. You learn on the ground, you see your friends do, you see others do, you, you take a look at some of the magazines, sometimes you go to the libraries and yeah, that kind of thing, but there was no formal education. Uh, I think my development was more of the environment that uh, helps to build me, or I would say helps to form me in, in that sense. After the break, the journey continues with Jeffrey's wife, Mastura, and how they set up an art gallery together. Jeffrey met his future wife, Mastura, in the late 90s, where she was a graphic student and he, the president of Singapore Minangkabau Association. But it wasn't love at first sight, lah. It wasn't? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I was still, I was still, I was in my third year actually in, in doing my part-time design course. And that was where uh, I was tasked to do a design project and I had to you know, come up with a concept, the logo, and to present it. So I happened to have to present to a certain person, and it happened, happened to be, you know, uh, uh, Jeffrey. It, it was, and, yeah, it was, yeah, a, it was, it was um, a meeting with the me and the exco and myself, and yeah, yeah, I, what what yeah. what she expected was that the association president and the exco would be <laughs> old people. But old she fat was belly old, fat, old, big, I mean, Sorry. Yeah, uh, old, I mean, <laughs> senior people. Jeffrey and Mastura got to know each other better when they spent time on a project together. However, it was when Jeffrey helped her with a sketch that Mastura developed feelings for him. It was this um, portrait of a couple that uh, was meant as a gift to an, uh, you know, uh, from a friend. So she wanted a, to give this portrait, you know, yeah. for a wedding. So I, I started on it, and I, but I felt stuck. Maybe because um, I was busy, and then my, my, you know, I wasn't, you know, focusing and all that. So he, he said, let me have a hand in it, you know. So he took the pencil, and then he, he erased a bit, yeah. <laughs> he erased there, and then, yeah, he, and he put in his strokes. I'm like, wow, I know this, wow, this guy can draw. <laughs> Falling in love and getting married were natural progressions for the pair with a honeymoon in Bali that was very unique to them. We didn't plan for it, but we know that it's going to be an arty kind of a honeymoon thingy where we pack.